Yesterday, San Francisco starter Madison Bumgarner flirted with his first major league complete game and fanned a career-high 13. The Padres, Jesus Guzman, continues to come through in the clutch, hitting a cool 434 with runners in scoring position. Don't fear the beard. Can the Padres clip the Giants tonight? Welcome to Petco Park for game two of this series. Is the San Diego Padres and the San Francisco Giants. We welcome you in, Mark Neely with Tony Gwynn and Mark Grant. Guys, Carlos Beltran was not in the lineup yesterday for the Giants due to food poisoning. He is back in the lineup today. And, Mud, he was the big acquisition that the Giants picked up at the deadline. Has he brought them what they'd hoped? Well, Carlos Beltran is that guy on the roster for the San Francisco Giants that Brian Sabian and Bruce Bochy really wanted. Why? Because the guy's been through the ringer. This guy is a veteran guy who can really put up some good numbers. And with these numbers, guys, he's been playing hurt. He is grinding out with that wrist. So what does he bring? The individual stats are great. But collectively of a team, it's been totally different. He's brought some leadership to that clubhouse. And I'll tell you one thing, those guys in the Giants clubhouse really respect a guy like Carlos Beltran going out there and playing hurt with that bad wrist. He is definitely grinding it out for the Giants. Well, Tony, the other guy that was out there was Hunter Pence. He's gone into the Phillies order, and that's a whole different world as far yeah. as offense <laughs> compared to the Giants. Is it fair, though, to make everything on Carlos Beltran's shoulders around the Giants offense? I, I don't think so. And, you know, like Mutt said, I mean, they brought Beltran in. He was the guy, the, the best hitter available, let's say. And, and offensively, his numbers have been pretty good for the Giants. But when you look at the rest of this lineup, Cody Ross, Pat Murrow, Andre Torres, guys that had you know pretty big years for them last year, and they've all struggled. Aubrey Huff, you know they've let Miguel Tejada and Aaron Rowan go. Uh, offensively, they struggle. So you can't put it all on Carlos Beltran. He's come in, he's given them the kind of offense that they needed, but they need everybody else to step up too. So Beltran in the lineup tonight. Pablo Sandoval, who had two homers yesterday, not in the lineup because the Padres have a lefty on the mound. Let's look at that pitching matchup. It is. A rookie making just his second major league start for the Giants. 24-year-old lefty Eric Surkamp, and he faces Wade LeBlanc, who is 3-0 in four career starts against the Giants. That's tonight's pitching matchup brought to you by Discount Tire, where America saves on tires. It is game two of a three-game series between the Padres and the Giants. And the first pitch from Petco Park is straight ahead.
Idle Falls right around the corner. Padres and Giants tonight. Let's take a look at the San Francisco lineup brought to you by the Prize Patrol presented by Jerome's Furniture. Text winning to 269 411 to enter. Take a look at the Giant lineup. It features Justin Christian just up from AAA leading off playing center field. And Keppinger, Beltran, Ross, DeRosa, Brett Pill getting the start at first. He's up from AAA. Cabrera, Stewart, and the pitcher Sir Camp in just a second major league start. A look at that lineup for Bruce Bochy. They are seven games back. There's pitches up high. They're not waving a white flag here no. yet. No, we wanted to see some of these young right hand hitters give them a chance. Gives Wade LeBlanc. Justin Christian is his first big league at bat since 08, and Hundley tumbles into the camera well. Good to see him pop back up. Well, he took a tumble. Oh. You know, it looked like they were kind of undecided. And you know what? Just looking at that, I know that's close to the railing, but I think James Darnell, that's, that's got to be his ball. Got to be. Mm. Take a listen, follow right in the camera while there. Jimmy G, our cameraman, is located. Nick just overran that ball and then lost track of where he was and went tumbling over the... And you know, that camera roll, it's lower than ground level, is it not? And it's cement. Yeah. It's a 2 1 pitch to Justin Christian. Down low. When our guys go over there. We got to help them. Help them a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> help them a little bit over there. The Padres starting pitching profile brought to you by your San Diego County Cadillac dealer. Stop in today for an attractive lease or purchase offer. A high fly. Center field may have been waiting on that. He calls off blanks to make the catch. And that's the way this game begins. Well, oh, Wade LeBlanc, last three starts for the left hander. 15 in the third innings pitch, more hits than innings pitch with 19, and seven walks. So it's got to be a little bit more efficient. We talked about that in the pregame show. And like any left hander that's not going to blow hitters away, he's got to keep the ball down. Let's face it, keep the ball down, have his infielders have a busy night tonight. Work ahead. Giant second baseman Jeff Keppinger takes the first pitch strike. Keppinger in the opener of the series yesterday went one for four with a run scored and also walked once. You see his combined numbers between Houston and San Francisco. He came over from the Astros on July 19th. In the air to right field, Denorfia back pedals, pulls up, makes the catch. Uh, two fly ball outs in the Giants first. Let's take a look at the Padre defense. Blanks, Maben, and Denorfia in the outfield. How about the infield? Darnell starting at third, Perino at second, Guzman at first. The veteran is Bartlett at short with Hundley catching. Here's your chance, boys, right? Darnell, Perino, the adapter, you can plug him in anywhere. Logan Forsythe still on the shelf for. Uh, a little bit longer. Now here's Carlos Beltran. We missed yesterday's game. It was described by Bruce Bochy as either food poisoning or flu. Either way, intestinally, he was not ready to go and he's back in the lineup today. Hit hard towards short. A diving attempt by Bartlett, but it goes off. The heel of his glove and trickles into left field. Beltran is on with a base hit. Did that ball knuckle on Bartlett? Yeah, that was a knuckle ball. Bartlett thought he was going to be right on it. Sometimes this happens, change up off the end. That ball knuckles mm. on him, on Bartlett a little bit and unable to come up with it. Well, sitting at home, that looked like a ball that should be caught. That probably should have been caught, but... Every now and then you get a ball that knuckles on you and you stick your glove in one place and the ball doesn't go somewhere else. So two out single for Beltron. Cody Ross takes ball one. Ross in the cleanup spot tonight after a three hit game yesterday. With two RBIs. He had a couple of doubles. Also scored twice. Oh! 
Blank hits the inner half. With a slider, it's a ball and a strike. And we talked about Beltron being picked up near the deadline this year for the Giants. This is a guy that was acquired after the deadline last year that turned out to be one of the playoff heroes for San Francisco. Wants change the speeds on Cody Ross. He's starting to swing the bat a little bit better now. And guys, this is what we were talking about also. Padre pitchers getting ahead 0 2 1 2 and see if they can put him away. Now I think is a perfect time for that slider down and into Cody Ross. It was soft away on that last foul ball. 15th pitch of the first inning for Wade LeBlanc. Well, back and out of play. Went with that fastball. It was up. 89 miles per hour on the LeBlanc fastball. Two out single by Beltron. LeBlanc has Ross in the hole. The one two pitch. Instead of check. Beltron goes. Casually back to the back. Hey, you mentioned a great word there. Casually, I mean, you, you fire a P over there to first base. You might catch him sleeping a little bit. He kind of walked back to first base on that pickoff attempt. LeBlanc comes home. A fastball is high. Two and two. But the one thing Wade LeBlanc can't do is try to overthrow. You start overthrowing, you're going to elevate. The stuff isn't going to be there. Black has actually increased velocity mm -hmm. on his fastball, hasn't he, in the last year yep. or so? Ross battling the block. Long look in by Wade. Now he's ready. Ross fouls another one off. Little a cut cutter or a slider there down and away. You know, Mark, you mentioned the uh, the velocity of the fastball. I think as a pitcher throws more fastballs, get more comfortable with it, you are going to gain velocity. It's not going to be eight, ten miles an hour, but for Wade LeBlanc's case, a few ticks above 86-ish, right? Right. Which could be a big difference. But the big difference is, can he locate it at 89? That's the key. Can yeah. he locate? It? He can put it where he wants it. Little tap out in front of the plate. LeBlanc fields, turns, and throws him out. Get that one away from Ross. Get another back to the block. A hit. The man left on. And the Padres are coming up. Alignment. Maven leads off in center field. Bartlett, Guzman, Blanks hitting cleanup. 
Hundley in the five spot, hitting 320 here at his home ballpark. The Norfia, nice return yesterday. He's in right. Darnell at third, Perino, and then LeBlanc. Starting pitching profiles brought to you by Bank of America, setting opportunity in motion in San Diego to help our community and economy. His surname is Sir Camp, and his first name is Eric, and this 24-year-old rookie left-hander, second major league start. Kind of a deceptive motion, a fastball about 88-89, a curveball. Occasionally a change and a cutter. Kind of an arm swing like a Madison Bumgarner almost from the left side. That's so the it, watching him warm up, that's yep. the first guy that popped into my mind. Yep. It's, like, it's like Bumgarner out there again. Put in the air by Maven to right center field, and Beltron trots over, reaches up to make the catch. Here's the San Francisco defense brought to you by North County Cadillac. Customer service at a whole new level. Ross Christian, that's Justin Christian, and Beltron in the outfield. DeRosa and Pill on the corners. Brent Pill making the start. Cabrera, Orlando Cabrera, and Keppinger and Stewart catching. Justin Christian, oh, the time has come. Thought I'd go a little Night Ranger on you there. And you know that you're the only one to say. Okay, that's a strike. <laughs> Get the chance out in center field. He hadn't played in the big league since 2008. He had a 24 games worth with the Yankees back in 08. 1 1 pitch to Bartlett. He's off the outside corner. Two hits yesterday for Jason, including a double and a run score. Three and one. And I think it would be fair to say that we've got a couple left handers out here tonight that are kind of in the same mold. Huh? 88, 89. Little breaking ball. Trying to work down to the zone, have their infielders work for him. Sir Camp is a strike thrower in his. Minor league days. Issues a five pitch walk to Bartlett. Sir Camp made his big league debut against Houston. It was on August 27th. He went six innings, allowed just one earned run on six hits. Walked three, struck out four. A no decision for him. And Stewart needs a new mitt. I think that's because Sir Camp was throwing <laughs> cheddar <laughs> at the plate. <laughs> Didn't split the webbing there. Just huh? catching Kane and Linscom and Wilson and all those guys. Loosened it up. It's always good to have that spare mitt nearby, though. Got to have it ready to go. Did you have a spare mitt as a pitcher? I did. You did? Had a backup. Yep. Hey. Now, you as a gold glover. I mean, that, that was your baby. That yeah. was your that was your girl, right? But you always had a backup. Like was it said. tough to go to the backup though? Never something... had to. I never, never had to go to. Yeah. You made sure that those uh, lacings were always good and strong and good to go. To keep, it, keep it snug. But Tony, did outfield glovers get larger the longer you played? Yeah. Were you tempted <laughs> to get a little larger? Yeah. You're right. Strike on the inside corner to Guzman. What's the longest you went with one glove? Uh, 13 and, well, I used uh, one glove for two years. You, know, 100, you play 150 or so games. At the end of a year, it's beat up pretty good. So, But I, I had one that I played two years with. But, uh, talk about the size. It went to 13. But for a few years, it was mine was 13 and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Brett Butler's was oh, like 13 a, and three quarters. It was a it was a high life <laughs> yeah. he used out there. It was bigger than he was. I think he slept in it at night. <laughs> it was like a hammock. And so yeah, they, 13 is the rule now. Guzman hits it in the air down the right field line near the pole and fading foul. Hey, that wasn't far from being a opposite field home run. Now this could by about 15 feet maybe from the pole. There he is with two strikes going the opposite way there. Tough to catch with a foam finger, but he did get the souvenir. Ed's like, don't point at me. <laughs> it's the one-two pitch to Guzman. 
Big breaking ball up and away. He's by knocked in one of the two Padre runs yesterday. 335 average on the season. I just want to correct myself. That foul ball down there was a 1 1 pitch to make it 1 2. See if he goes the opposite way here. Right, this is when he's done his best hitting right mm -hmm. here. He's been down in the count. Scan did a nice breakdown uh, prior to first pitch on Guzman and his approach with two strikes. 23 of 32 in steal attempts is Bartlett. He has the attention of Eric Surkamp. Here's Bochy's Giants beginning play seven games back of Arizona. The D-backs do have a lead getting late in Colorado. Slowly hit past the bow and Keppinger to play to first and retires Guzman and over to second goes Bartlett. Well, speaking of Brett Butler, we brought him up in the size of his glove. You can see that's that's a pretty big piece of leather right there. And, and Tony, <laughs> Tony, does that dive kind of remind you of anything? Yeah, inside the park grand slam. Oh, believe maybe it. I hit. Didn't get to that 13 and a half inch glove <laughs> on that one. <laughs> guys are amazing. You guys pull these old footage out. Kyle Blanks. Throw at the knees for strike one. Seven homers and 134 at bats for Kyle. Oh, high and deep. Left field, back at the fence. Ross and makes the catch. Holy smokes. The ball faded and Ross made the catch. Well, Tony did go deep in essence over that 13 and a half inch glove and circled the bases with Dodger Stadium for Granny. New Year's season tickets today and be entered to win one of 15 great prizes. Today's 15 prizes and 15 games winner, Randy Brewington, who wins a day to be a member of the grounds crew here at Petco Park. It's not too late to place your 2012 deposit and be entered to win. Call the Padres at 619-795-5555. Randy, I do hear Luke Yoder can be a bit of a rough boss. Good luck with that one. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> He'll have a great time. Are you going to work, though? Yeah. <laughs> First pitch. This is inside to Mark DeRosa. Score this game here in the second. 
Who thought Kyle Blank's blast was going to go out of the park? Raise your hand. I, I'd I, have to raise mine. All I, three of us did. I, I thought that one was ticketed at least to the facade in the second deck when he hit that ball. Psych. I was watching Cody Ross and just the way he went back on it, he thought he was going to be able to make a play. Down and into DeRosa. So what do you think, Tony? Got in on him a little bit? He's got in on him a little bit. But still put a good swing on there, but Cody Ross got his hand on that wall, and you yeah. just kind of thought he was going to make the play. People forget Cody Ross played in Florida all those years where they've got deep in left center and the big wall in left. Mm -hmm. and Deep and right, all kinds of weird configuration. That's past the shortstop Bartlett and DeRosa with a solid single that played in by Blanks. A leadoff base hit from Mark DeRosa. Hit number two for San Francisco. This ball is pretty pretty well hit. I mean, he goes down and gets that ball. Some serious top spin. I mean, one of that ball on the outside corner. Yeah. A lot of the middle of the plate. Here is first baseman Brett Pill. His first major league plate appearance. He actually was called up, had his contract purchased August 31st. He was seeing his first action. He put up very good numbers at AAA Fresno, including 25 homers. His 107 RBIs were just one shy of a Fresno. Franchise record. Bill rubs one down the left field side, and in his first major league at bat, it's a two run home run off the Western Metal Building. Just getting ready to say, Bill's got power. Tried to throw him a change up there, and he stayed back on it nicely and hit it out of the ballpark. Uh, I'm sure the Giants would like to have that baseball back. He came back onto the field, and Kyle Blanks flipped it up into the seats beyond left field, but Pill hit a rope out the left. Stayed back on it nice. Third stop Orlando Cabrera with the bases empty. And nobody on after the pill two run home run in his first major league at bat. Will he get the souvenir? Gonna have to do some negotiating with that young lady or the gentleman. But of course, she now is the one in possession of the baseball. Here they come. Oh, here we go. There's negotiation will start get, to happen. Give you mm -hmm. some Cracker Jacks. And <laughs> Come on, we'd like to talk to you for a yeah. minute. He he doesn't know what's going on. Right. Oh, what did I do? We got Scott Boris on the phone right now, <laughs> <laughs> trying to work something out. That was his first major league hit and first major league home run. Um, yeah, that's if you can do both of those in the same swing. That's absolutely. pretty impressive. First hit, first homer, first at bat. Pops up, foul ground. Guzman out of room. So the second pitch that he saw in the big leagues, home run. Yeah. So of course from here on out the game's easy. <laughs> and a home run, my first at bat, second pitch I saw. Better in Orlando Cabrera shoots it right side on the ground. Andy Perino to his left throws him out for the first out of the second. Apparently he still has the baseball. Put it in his pocket, but uh, I think he's. I think is he playing hardball? So he's, he's waiting to see what he's going to get. <laughs> yeah, I gave it back to him. And, uh, oh no, hard negotiator. Uh -oh. That's hit well by Chris Stewart, but fouled on the left field side. Ooh. Strike one. <laughs> Wade trying to, uh, oh, he missed the location. He wanted, 
The location's been off. That one he wanted down and away. That one was up and in, it looked like. This is low. The negotiation is continuing. That's fair past third. It kicks into the corner. Blank's throw into second base. And let's do it as a double. Third hit of the inning. Oh, location with the fastball off, location with the breaking ball off. And down to the order, you got Pill, the rookie, and Chris Stewart. Look, this breaking ball here, even though it's on the outer half, maybe, but it's up, it's elevated, it speeds up his bat, enabling him to pull it. First major league hit, first major league home run. Like to get him the ball. Yeah, just switch it out, right? Here's what we can do. Here's the pitcher, Eric Surkamp. You got your first major league home run ball, Tony? Yeah. Hit it in Wrigley yeah. in the basket. They threw it back. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> back That's guaranteed yeah. getting it back there. Yeah. A lot of listening going on there. On the left field side foul. Who is it off of? Which cup? Will Campbell. Ah. Will Soup Campbell. Yeah. All right, he's giving him the baseball. And he's saying, yes, my son would like to go to an Ivy League school. <laughs> <laughs> 2 pitch. Down and away. Now let's see how far this head bat goes. Has an 2 breaking ball away, 1-2. Matt Pill on the second big league pitch. He ever saw hit it out. And strike three on the outside corner to get Sir Camp. Well, remember another giant first baseman who went deep in his first major league at bat. It was against Nolan Ryan. This was Will Clark's first pitch that he ever saw in the big leagues. Hit it out to center field. Off Nolan Ryan. That was April 8th, 1986. And here tonight, giant first baseman Brett Pill is homered on the second pitch you've seen in the big leagues. Fouled back by Justin Christian. <laughs> That's a uh, bitter pill to swallow there. You know what would be hilarious? If they did like the old Monty Hall, let's make a deal. Bring out three boxes. There you and go. <laughs> Making a challenge. One, number two, number three. Making a challenge yeah. for him. Exactly. She's on the phone. Oh, what pitch. Strike at the knees. Got a feel that Brett will be reunited with his home run ball at some point tonight. I think Brett's going to be hustling back to the hotel so he can see himself go deep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice doing business with him. It's on a play right side. And they have the souvenir baseball. Nice job, Robbie. Robbie works for the Padres there. Call him the negotiator. Closing the deal. Got to find out what's it going to take to yeah. close the deal. 0 2 to Christian. Foul back again. Justin Christian. And his contract purchased today from Triple-A Fresno. Fly to center to begin the game. It's again, a lot of pitches. What we were talking about in the pregame show. This is the 43rd. Coming from Wade LeBlanc. With two outs here in the second. Now he and Hundley need to get on the same page. Justin Christian came up in the Yankees organization, played in 24 games for the Yankees in the big leagues in 2008. 
Playing his first major league game tonight since 2008. He gets under one, a high fly. Left side under it to shortstop. Bartlett makes the catch. But the Giants get a couple of runs. As Brett Hill homered on his second major league pitch. Receive a Padres long sleeve t shirt and a pet bandana. First pitch is at 535. So get here early and stick around after that for a post game concert with Mercy Me. You can purchase your tickets today at Padres.com. Well, in his second major league start, Eric Surkamp has a 2 0 lead as the Padres come up in the bottom of the second. Nick Hundley, the catcher, will lead off. Nick Homer in his last at bat yesterday. His sixth of the year. And that's what ended Madison Bumgarner's day after eight and a third innings. Hundley, Denorfia, and Darnell in the San Diego second. They catch one in the air to center field. Justin Christian going back. He's to the track. Gone! Hundley to straightaway center. Well, he's homing it back to back at bats going back to yesterday. But his home run here in the second gets the Padres on the board. It's 2-1. to one. Stayed back on that breaking ball nicely. Get it to straightaway center field. And Nick's got to protect. 0 and 2 count. Oh, the breaky ball. Right into the wheelhouse of the right handed hitter. Elevated. Belt buckle high. Nice. Northia takes ball one. You know, watching the, 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 the smoke from the celebration, and it's blowing in towards the plate area mm -hmm. fairly significantly. Yeah. But he still hit it through that. Uh, Breeze. You see that wafting over here to the first base side. Inside and off the glove of Chris Stewart. 24th RBI for Nick Hundley. Kind of reminds me back at uh, back in the 70s, late 70s, when I was a kid going to Comiskey Park in Chicago. Oh, the exploding scoreboard? No, not so much. 
<laughs> you went around for dinner, disco demolition that way. Oh, that's another game I wanted to go to. My dad. No kiss said, concert. No way, no way. No kiss concert. No disco demolition. You led such a sheltered life, Mark like Kent. They had to forfeit the second game of the oh, doubleheader. Yeah. Field was on fire. Fans rioted. Now the right field side off the bat of Denorfia and a landing foul. Even if the Padres just get one, I mean, it would be nice to add on to that. But just to get one. I think Zerkamp's the kind of guy for the Padres that uh, eventually they're going to figure him out and give, take, put some pretty good swings on. Not overpowering. He's been around the plate. Three pitch guy. That's rope towards the left field corner. Fair ball. One hop up against the fence. Did Orphea been tearing the cover off the ball since coming off the DL yesterday. There's three hits since yesterday. All of them doubles. You talked about in the open not being able to finish. You got ahead. Try to sneak a fastball in, and Denorfi is right on it. Lines it down the line in the corner. Gets himself a double and gets in scoring position. And, you know, the Padres, before it's all said and done, are going to be able to hopefully take some pretty good swings. James Darnell takes a strike. Arnell playing in his 11th big league game. Just off the outside corner. Lead off Homer by Hundley, double by Denorfia. No strike. It's one and two. High run to Norfia in scoring position. Breaky ball hit left side. The Norfia unable to advance as the third baseman Mark DeRosa throws out Darnell. First down of the inning. Here's Andy Perino, the second baseman, playing in his tenth big league game. Which inning Perino has three hits left handed, still looking for his first big league hit from this side of the plate, right handed. He is 0 for 2 as a right handed hitter. Change up, ball one. No, if, I'm a, if I'm a hitter coming up there with a guy in scoring position, I'm sitting off speed. We've seen that so often. All the time. You know, so you're not going to make a living with runners in scoring position swinging at the first pitch unless you're sitting on something off speed. A lot of times, pitchers are especially. Reno's hitting in the eighth spot. Pitcher's on deck, and even though LeBlanc can swing the bat pretty good, he's not going to give in mm -hmm. and throw him a first pitch fastball. So. And it's a common theme around Major League Baseball. Yep. You just don't, you, you know, don't try to sneak a heat, heater in there. And a lot of times, especially with young hitters, that's exactly what they're looking for. And they're cheating on that first pitch fastball, and they never get it. Her camp a couple of looks back at the Norfia. Eric Surkamp, 6'5, 220 pound left hander from Cincinnati, Ohio. Sir Camp played college baseball at North Carolina State. Two and zero count to Andy Perino. Oh. That hit to Norfia, who now 
recognizes that a win in the right field and Beltran's throw late into third base. I think it also might have taken a beat for Krista. Realize what happened. That ball came right up. I don't know if it got him in the neck as well as the batting helmet, but it shot mainly off the helmet and into right field. I hope that was all helmet right there because it hit him and it shot right in the right mm -hmm. field. And he's looking for the ball, finds it. He looks, he holds his ground for a second, but finds the baseball and is able to oh, pick up an extra 90 man. feet. You know, he's fortunate because he doesn't have the ear flap mm -hmm. on that side yeah. where the ball hit, and it hit just above the ear. Even a direct shot to the helmet oh, yeah. is going to throw you for a loop. And, and it goes to show you as well, you know, that was kind of a glancing blow. Yep. Even though it's a glancing blow, I mean, those helmets, you know, that plastic, that's... Probably sounds that like that somebody... That still rings your bell. Man. Yeah. yeah. Somebody hit a gong or something inside yeah. his helmet. Yeah. Line. Uh, puts the tying run at third. Here comes the giant infield. They're going to play the infield in. They're not going to concede the run here. Change up for breaking ball here. Breaking yeah. ball, and it's a low strike. Tell you what, if he throws that soft breaking ball, you better be heads up at third base to Rosa and Cabrera. Right handed hitter. That soft toss and le uh, lefty with the breaking ball. Pull that ball to the left side. You can see Cabrera is kind of cheating a little bit more towards the mm -hmm. third base side. Right center field. Let's see if it's deep enough. It is caught by Christian tagging to Northfield. The throw coming home, and he's in safely. First big league RBI for Andy Perino. It's a sack fly, and it's 2-2. The extra 90 feet on the error by the pitcher. He left the Padres out. Reno drives in the tie and run. Christian try to get behind that ball, and this is the one throw where you could go ahead and take a shot at trying to get it there in the air. Nobody else is on base. You try to throw it all the way home. So, first Major League RBI for Perino, and it's that time of year we're seeing a lot of firsts. That's towards short, just out of reach of Cabrera and into left. And Wade LeBlanc, that's not his first big league hit. It is his fourth of the season. And he keeps the Padre second going. Inside out. I love that. Over Cabrera's glove. Well, just... Hit right on the button, hit so hard the bear can't come up with it. Brad Peel, Brett Peel, no, hey, you're welcome. Yeah. On the homer. <laughs> Break your ball down in the dirt to Cameron Maven. Curveball, this one a called strike to Cameron. And he even fly to right his first time up. Decent pitch, but apparently inside, according to plate umpire Chris Guccione. I guess that last pitch was a sinker and hit. Different kind of movement on it. And it goes up after it and fouls it out of play up into the second deck. Each team has scored twice here in the second for the Giants. 
Brett Pill a home run in his first big league at bat. Only is it a solo shot. Perino a sack fly for his first big league RBI and it's a 2 2 score. Here's the 2 2 breaky ball fouled at the plate. Well I mentioned the blocks hit a moment ago not his first big league hit. This was his first big league hit. And I know he <laughs> loves when we show this because he didn't realize it was in left field. <laughs> he thought it was a foul ball. <laughs> Done uh, that. I've, I've done that a couple of times. Really? So late, you just don't think there's any way that ball could be fair, and it, and it you know, somehow it stays for you. <laughs> just off the outside corner, Sir Camp acted like he thought he had him struck out to in the inning. The block has shown us, though, and especially since that time, he's no slouch with the yeah, bat. He just leaves the bat. Yeah. yeah, he's really worked hard. He will be on the move, the 3 2 pitch. That one is strike three call. First strike out of the game for Eric Surkamp. The Padres do tie it, though. They get two. The first one coming on Hundley's leadoff home run to center. And after two, it's all tied up. From San Diego's own Switchfoot. The concert is free for all fans with a paid ticket for the September 18th game. Don't wait. Get your tickets today at Padres.com slash Switchfoot. Luke Hundley. Home run in this ball game. Hit number six in the ninth inning yesterday. Hits number seven in the second inning tonight. I'll tell you, Nick took a beating down in that camera well. And then he took a beating of that baseball straight away center field. No side effects from hitting that concrete. Part of the order for the Giants in the third against LeBlanc, Keppinger, Beltran, and Ross. Another half strike to Keppinger. They give Kempinger left center. Maven shading him to go the other way. That's that. Two and one. Kempinger fly to right his first time up. Holds it towards third and fair. Past the diving James Darnell. Chased into the corner by Blanks. Eppinger will hold it second. And lead off double. 
Going to bring up Carlos Beltran. It takes us to our leaderboard brought to you by Los Primos, home of the Monster Burrito. Get your $5 meal deal for a limited time only. Carlos Beltran is nearing the 300 300 club. 300 career homers, 300 career steals. He would be the eighth member. Here are the seven that are in there. Both Barry and Bobby Bonds, Willie Mays, A-Rod. The two names at the bottom may surprise some. Reggie Sand uh, Sanders and Steve Finley. Each over 300 in those categories. And Tony, you played with both those guys. Yep. They both surprised me. I, for me, more Steve Finley just because when we got Steve Finley from Houston, he, he was a guy that hit you know 10 to 12 homers mm -hmm. a year. He came here and had a couple of big years for us, 30 homers. Reggie Sanders always was a home run hitting guy. So yeah. more Finley of a running guy, yeah. younger, and Sanders more of a home run guy, and not as a, much as a runner as you had thought. Yeah. I, you know, here, both of those guys both have over 300 homers and 300 stolen bases. Hey, long careers for yeah. both those both guys. Them. Good big league careers. Carlos Beltran. The left center field, and it drops in for Beltran. Keppinger comes in, and he'll score the go ahead run. So Beltron is 74th overall RBI of the year, his eighth as a Giant in this is 24th San Francisco game. Fought that one off. Yeah, and again, this hadn't been a whole lot of opportunities for him to drive in runs, and this is just good hitting. Fights off the cutter in on his hands, gets in on him, but drops it in the left field. Kepinger got a great jump from second base, read it off the bat. But the big thing there is the elevation of that pitch. If that pitch is down, it's a breaking ball. It's probably a ground ball to Bartlett. Or to Darnell. Strike to Cody Ross. Ross bounced back to the bound his first time up. Blanco one. Old foul. We showed you the list of the 300 300 clip. Beltran would look to be the eighth. The interesting thing, if you include Beltran of that, all the two spent time with the Giants. A Rod and Albert Dawson are the only ones who have not. Everybody else spent time as a San Francisco Giant. I think something else about that list, too, is that. Uh, the stolen base percentage of those guys in that list is pretty good, too. But Carlos Beltran is, too. Ross hits it to straightaway center. Maven goes back under it to make the catch. And that is the first out of the inning. Since up Mark DeRosa, the third baseman. Rosa singled and scored on the Brent Pill home run in the second. Line to third, caught by Darnell, throw back to first, but back safely goes Beltran. Two outs, that's going to bring up Brent Pill, who in his first major league bat, an inning ago, on the second pitch he saw in the major leagues, ropes one off the Western Metal Building. Comes the ninth giant to Homer in their first major league at bat. Popped up. Over the outfield grass goes Perino to make the catch. Giants get a run though on Beltron's RBI base hit. And at the midpoint of the third, it's 3 2 San Francisco.
Stop by and test drive the all-new redesigned 2012 Civic and check out the latest offers on the full lineup of Hondas. Glad you can spend part of your Tuesday night with us. Mark Neely, Mark Grant, and Tony Gwynn from Petco Park. A 3-2 Giants lead into the home half of the third. Part of the Padres order comes up and leading off the shortstop Jason Bartlett. For camp. Since this is the first time we have seen him, we need to look at his arsenal. His fastball misses and it's a ball and a strike. You said he went to NC State, right, Margo? Wolfpack, yep. Dan Plesak, Tracy Woodson. Ah. Big leaguers who played for the Wolfpack. I think the last I saw of Tracy Woodson, he was the head baseball coach at Valparaiso. Yes, he is. Yeah, right. Breaky ball built it down the right field side. Fair! And it bounces into the corner. Beltran picks it up in fair territory, but now before Bartlett is standing at second. With a leadoff double. He's hitting there by Bartlett, just taking this ball and going the other way with it. Talked about before with uh, LeBlanc, the ball's elevated, easier for the hitter to get to it, doesn't try to do too much, goes in the right field corner. Might be one of those games back and forth. Has that look, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That look. Well, here's Guzman hitting 434 with runners in scoring position this season. Ball one outside. Pitch. Bouncing ball past the pitcher, the shortstop Cabrera fields. Throws on Guzman. He does advance Bartlett over to third. But despite a ground ball to the left side, he advances Bartlett. Certainly got a piece of this ball. No? Looked like he did. Cabrera able to come up with it. Bartlett never hesitated, was going on contact. You know that ball was hit on the left side and sit behind him, so he could go ahead and pick up the extra 90 feet. All one outside to Kyle Blanks in his first at bat. He hit one high and deep to left. And it was caught by Cody Ross. In a few feet of getting out. Goes to the on speed pitch to change. Bruce Bochy electing to uh, have the infield play back. Nice. Try to prevent the uh, the big inning, get an out if it's a grounder. High fly, center field. Christian retreats to the warning track and makes the catch. Bartlett tags, he'll trot home and tie this game at three. Kyle Blanks has flirted with a couple of home runs tonight in his first two at bats. At least this time he does have something to show for it. An RBI on the sack fly. Well, last time up, got in on him just a little bit for that deep fly, fly ball to left. This one, it's down. Looks like it's off the end of the bat as well. The point being, my goodness, how many balls is he going to smoke out of the ballpark once he finds that sweet spot? That's off the end of the bat, nearly up against the wall. He got the job done. Yes, he did. Hunley homered his first time up. First pitch change up there. So Nick is homered in back to back at bats. Going back to the ninth inning yesterday when he hit one out off. The starting pitcher Madison Bumgarner. This one in the air to right field and Beltran trots to his left. Well, each team 
answering the other. Padres get that run back, and after three, it's tied at three. For most career at bats with only one home run. That's I know that one. one. I know oh, that one. So I'm going to stay out. Yeah. Major League record for career at bats with only one home run. The answer coming up shortly. That's heading to the San Francisco fourth, bottom three up. And on the line, right to the second baseman, Carino Cabrera. It's the first out. One pitch, one out. Catcher Chris Stewart doubled to left his first time. I want to take a guess. I don't know the answer. Okay. But I'm afraid if I get it right. Write, write it down and don't right. don't tell our audience, but write it down. And I'll see if you're right. You are wrong. I am incorrect. So I will give my guess then. Yeah. My guess was Bert Campanaris. Tony, do you have a guess? You want to write it His down? Career, career at bats. So for a season, I think I know that one. I'm not sure about career. So obviously we're talking a position player here because a pitcher wouldn't yes. have that many career at yes. bats. Infielder. On the Giants? No. 2 1 pitch lifted in the air to left field. Blinks has to come in a few steps forward. Two down. I'm not sure how many home runs Burt Campanaris had, but I suspect he didn't have many. That's a good question. Since you know the answer, but let me ask you this: okay. Did this individual ever face you? No. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> because he probably yeah. would have had a lot more. <laughs> exactly right. He may have more than one. That's hit by Sirkan softly to first. Guzman makes the underhand toss to the block. Hey, Wade has a three-up, three-down inning for the first time tonight. Padres coming up in the bottom half of the tie game.
question. Who holds the major league record for most career bats with only one home run? And he's in the house. Dwayne Kuyper, San Francisco Giants television announcer, who also played. There he is on the right, Mike Kruko on the left. And Dwayne Kuyper's only home run came when he was playing with the Indians, August 29, 77. It was a solo shot to right, and it came off Steve Stone of the White Sox. And here it is. Listen in. Left-hand batter. He drives him down the right field line. Headed for the wall. It's gone! Dwayne Kuyper just hit his first major league home run. How about that? Hey, look at Dwayne on those bases. Oh, is he one happy ball player? Look at Buddy Bell waiting for him. You know, that sounds like a home, either radio or TV, because they're, they're personalizing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, in between innings, I went over to Kaiba. I said, hey, who called radio? And I'm not saying it is radio, but it was Joe Tate and Herb Score did color on radio. Yeah. So next half inning, I'll go ask him who did the TV back when he hit the home run. But, Tony, to get back, you said as a Giant, I apologize. He did play for the Giants, no. but he hit it as an Indian. We just saw. I still would have been wrong. Well, that call sounded like the Indians just won the World Series. They yeah. said it was Dwayne Kuyper's only career home run. <laughs> right. <laughs> was it Herb Score that said, look at Dwayne run the bases? Yeah. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> so the guy whose call on TV nowadays is out of here, hit one out of here in his big league playing career. Dorothy leading off to San Diego fourth inning. Six, seven, and eight hitters up. Sir Camp throws a strike, three and one. Dorothy had doubled and scored his first time up. And the changeup runs it full. Chris looks comfortable up there. He had really swinging his strikes. Right back up the middle. Man, Dino is on fire since coming off the disabled list. Two for two tonight. Four for six since coming off the DL. The hamstring injury. Man, those, those two outs he made were hit right on the button, too. And this one, they had to count 3-0. Works it back to 3-2. Doesn't panic. Got a good pitch to hit. Bangs it right back up the middle for a base hit. I believe the Padre hitters have done a nice job on the elevated breaking balls from Sir Camp. That was a nice job by Chris. Padres have put the leadoff band aboard now in each of the last three innings. They look to take their first lead. Third baseman James Darnell. Rounded out to third his first time up. Kind of tough to see. Did uh, Sir Camp just kind of point to his eyes? Difficulty seeing maybe with the, the road grays? Looking into Chris Stewart. Yeah, there's a shadow back there with that uh, that gray uni. So he's got his fingers painted. Stewart behind the plate to make it a little easier for Here you go, yeah. Sir Camp to see. Looks like he's got the, uh, is that for like the whiteout or yeah. is it tape? It's like whiteout. Oh, yeah, he actually painted his fingers, yeah. Yeah, the camera zoomed in there mm -hmm. and it was still hard to it, see. It is. Or now, a little excuse me swing may turn into two. Keppinger's relay and they go 6 4 3. Two outs, base is empty. Sir Kemp on that last ground ball started that like he was going to field it. Realized this ball was going up the middle. Watch. He starts after it and says, no, I'm going to let it go. Check swing by Darnell. Second baseman Andy Perino picked up his first big league RBI. In the second with a sacrifice fly to center. The 
Three runs, six hits, and error for the Giants. Three runs, five hits, no errors for the Padres. Changeup's been a pretty good pitch for him. Mm -hmm. You know, get back to that Dwayne Kuyper home run. We saw where it landed. It was the first row. Yeah. Kuyper says that he has the chair at his house. <laughs> really? <laughs> the, yeah. When they tore down the mistake All by right. the lake, as yeah. they used to call it, yeah. he got the, uh, the chair. And that's, so that's kind of the opposite of like the red seat and right in Fenway where <laughs> yeah. Ted hit his a mile. <laughs> right. In Old Mile High Stadium had one where uh, the minor league guy hit one <laughs> like 500 feet. <laughs> hit one into the first row. Thank you ball and a strikeout of Perino. Second K of the game. There at Sir Camp. We have finished four here at Petco Park at San Francisco three and San Diego three. Game recap brought to you by Murray Lampert Construction. Find the truth in home remodeling with Murray Lampert. See why that they're the company to trust. Get online. See what they're all about at MurrayLampert.com. Mark Neely. Thanks, bud. Top of the order for the Giants of the fifth. Justin Christian. It's up high. Christian is fly to center and popped to short. Making his San Francisco Giants debut. Towards third and foul. Christian spent a couple of seasons or a season and a half in independent baseball. Then signed with the Yankees, spent some time with the Yankees in the big leagues in 08. Rope to left, and that ball's into the corner, and there's the first Giants hit for Justin Christian. He's in the second with a leadoff double. Game has some elements of Groundhog Day. Another leadoff double. And when it's a lefty pitchy, pitcher and a righty hitter, you know, that spells trouble and vice versa. Righty pitcher, left handed hitter. Third time of the game, the Giants have put the leadoff hitter on base. Here's Kepinger who had a leadoff double of his own his last time up in the third. Nice pick up by Nick. You know, the Giants I'm sure have noticed the scoreboard and that the Rockies who were down have. Mounted quite a rally and are now leading Arizona 8 3 in the bottom of the eighth at Coors Field. 
So I'm surprised a couple of innings ago he had the infield back. Rockies have taken the lead. Willing to concede the run, and he ended up, Padres ended up scoring and tying the ball game up. But. Rockies with a seven run eighth inning in that game. Strike for the inside corner to Keppinger. And Pablo Sandoval has a shoulder issue that really hampers him batting right handed. So against a left handed starter like LeBlanc. Not in the starting lineup tonight. Despite a two homer game yesterday. Rounded left side towards the hole backhanded by Bartlett on the first in time and holding it second is Christian one out. It's a nice bit of pitching there by LeBron. Temperature to pull that ball to the left side, keep Christian at second base. Bartlett a nice backhand play and throw. Yeah, getting back to Sandoval. If he's going to play tomorrow or even in this game, the one thing that I figured out, those two home runs, what were they? Right there, guys. I, I, I threw another one fastballs. And, and you know what? Right in the left field corner by Belton. Christian scores, and Belton has knocked in two tonight. And the Giants reclaim the lead at 4 to 3. Belton came in with seven RBIs as a Giant in 23 games. He's three for three tonight with two ribs. Like the last base hit. The change up is elevated and he's right on it. Lines it in the left field. Talk about he got beat on the fastball, was able still able to muscle it in the left center field for a base hit in an RBI. This time jumps on a first pitch changeup. Gives the Giants the lead. Lead up hitter Cody Ross takes the ball low. The Padre bullpen is active. Anthony Bass, a right hander, heats. Ross flying to deep center his last time up. Blocks slider is a strike. Locating again that one on the inside corner and he's ahead one and two. Go right back in there, huh? That's a good pitch. Straighten him up. Now you can do so many things. Change up away. Fastball right back up in there. Double up for a ball. Maybe he'll offer at it and swing through it. Or the breaking ball down and in. Going right back in with that fastball. Okay, Karnak, what's next? Well, knowing the way, way the block throws, I'm guessing he's going to try to off speed him here. Keep Change it up away. Keep it there. Okay, absolutely. 2 2 pitch from LeBlanc. Off speed off the end of the bat and into center field where it's caught by Cameron Maiden. That was the changeup. And he did a pretty good job, Tony, of keeping that one down. Yeah, he didn't get it elevated. Ross was out in front of that. See where Hunley wants it. And that's okay. That's a good spot, mm -hmm. but still he got it fucked off the end of the, of the bat. You know, the the, the changeup is to get him out in front, get him off balance. And you see he was elevated enough for him to stay back and get it in the air. But it was off the end of the bat and may have been able to make the play. And let him tell you, like I'm, I'm sure he has all year long. Pitching is very difficult. Sure, it is, is not easy. I it's, don't see how you guys do we it. We sit here and watch it on TV, or you know, fans watch it on TV, and the fans at the ballpark watch guys pitch, and it is not easy. 
And these guys, the guys who are the best at it, <laughs> they really deserve a lot of credit. Chris. We talk about it all the time. These hitters, you can throw it 100 miles an hour. If it's in the middle of the plate, it's going to get hit. Guys do a great job of, of hitting. But, you know, pitching is throwing off a hitter's timing, and the best at it can do it and do it in the strike zone in a good spot to get out. Till this day, it still amazes me how hitters can go up there to the plate. A, not know it's coming. Two, with movement. And, and three, not knowing where it's going to be and still hit 300 or 320 or like in your case, you know, 333 or 338. 338. Yeah, don't cheat me out of those <laughs> five, five points. It just amazes me. Uh, you know me. what? That's You do it so often. It's like, you know, you guys throw your bullpens. Hitters go up to the plate and see the baseball so often. You just don't think about it. You just, I mean, I always try to just see it and react. I tried not to guess, tried not to anticipate, just react to what they throw you. Were there certain guys, though, Tony, that you did guess? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Randy Johnson guessed wrong a lot. <laughs> you know, you make outs. That's what happens when you guess. You make a lot of outs. And, you know, the real trick was, you know, like, this situation right here, guy on second, two outs, was my favorite one because a lot of times they just didn't get anything to hit. Mm -hmm. If you... You chase something out of the zone, you're going to get yourself out. But I got pretty good at being able to take a ball out of the zone and and putting it in play and making it work. Three balls and a strike on DeRosa. Well, trying at second, two outs, a run into the Giants' fifth. Foul back to the screen. Yeah, I know there's a st statistic for everything, and I I don't mean to put you on the spot, Tony, but. In the times in your major league career where you struck out, which was very few, the times that you were caught looking, do you know how many times it was? Quite a few. I would was say. it quite a few? Really? I would say. I would, I would have to say it's a very small. 438 times. That's how many times I struck out. 438. Yeah. I would, if I were a bet man, it would, it would be way less than half. Okay, of the times that you struck out looking, Tony, what percentage in your mind are you thinking? That was actually ball four. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, at the time, I probably thought that a lot. But, you know, sometimes you get in, into ruts where you're taking pitches that you think when you're standing there, they're not strikes. But you go back and look at them on video, and they were. Here comes a 3-2 to DeRosa, and he hits it in the air to straightaway center field. Cameron Maben backpedals a few steps. <laughs> Giants. You had a run on a couple of hits of Stranded Man. Let's see if the Padres can answer in the bottom half as they have done so twice tonight.
bottom of the fifth, and that means that it is the Channel 4 home run inning presented by Harris Rincon Casino. If a grand slam is hit this inning, the jackpot is up to $60,500. That be, could be coming your way if you enter at 4SD.com. Good luck. Now the Padres have the dying one and two hitters up, so they bat for LeBlanc with Aaron Cunningham. So five innings for LeBlanc. He allowed four runs, eight hits. No walks for LeBlanc. And he struck out one. Cunningham fouls it back to the screen. Cunningham is a pinch hitter this year. Four for 19. He has one pinch hit home run. Ball outside. By the way, Tony, you said he struck out 438 times. It's actually 434. Okay. In the neighborhood there. But not a lot of strikeouts for as many plate appearances as you had yeah. in your career. The one thing that always sticks out for me about Joe DiMaggio's numbers was his strikeouts and home runs yeah. were basically the same figure. I think his strikeouts may have been just a little bit higher than the home run. They're both in the 360s. Yeah. Three two pitch. It's the breaking ball on the ground to third. DeRosa fires to first. It just got him. One away. Nice. They've gotten Sertan a lead three times tonight, and each time Padres have come back to tie the game. So I wonder how long Bruce Bochy's going to go with him. Knowing that the Rockies have come back to take the lead. They did get Guillermo Mota up in the last inning. No activity right now in the Giants bullpen. And Arizona is batting in the ninth. Trailing the Rockies 8-3. In the dirt to Cameron Maven. Cam's fly to right and struck out. The first base side, so can't able to get to it and throw it up. So can't get off the hill quickly to the first base foul line to get the speedy Maven. The bases are empty with two outs for shortstop Jason Bartlett. Third camp faced the minimum three hitters last inning in the fourth thanks to a double play, but he's not had a three up, three down inning as of yet. He has retired the first two here in the fifth. Pours in a strike to Bartlett. Jason walked in the first. He doubled to right in the third and scored a run. As Tony mentioned, each time tonight the Giants have scored, the Padres have answered. Giants two in the second. Padres two of their own in the bottom of that inning. Giants one in the third. Padres got that run back in the bottom of the third. Giants scored a run in the top of his fifth. It's a fly ball to center field. Christian back to make the catch. And for the first time tonight, the Padres are unable to answer the giant run or runs in the top half of the frame. So after five complete for Petco, it's 4-3 San Francisco.
24th when your Padres take on the Dodgers at 535. Kids can take photos and play games with Dora the Explorer and SpongeBob SquarePants. All activities start at 335 and are included with a paid ticket to Saturday's game. Get your tickets today at Padres.com slash day of play. New hurler for the Padres is Anthony Bass. Well, Anthony has worked 19 relief outings since his recall. Only six runs and 2.08 ERA. And I think uh, Anthony Bath is gonna, Bass is going to be one of those guys that with each outing just gets better and better, more com comfortable at the big league level. And you know what, quite frankly, a chance here to hold the Giants, and that's how uh, the term vulture came about in Major League Baseball, right? Reliever come in and vulture a win. Hope them the you know the offense takes the lead and walk away with the W. I thought the vulture was more a guy who like gave up the lead, and then the team came back and won. You know and, you're and right. He got the you're right. Broken bat and into left field and a sliding Kyle Blake makes the catch. Phil Regan had that uh, was known as the vulture, vulture back yeah. in the day. <laughs> I got a good jump on this ball. He came in on that ball quickly. Yeah, he did. But I think you may be doing some memory repressing from some vulturing back in your own days. Mm -hmm. huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Orlando Cabrera. I used to hear about it in the clubhouse, too. Flannery, Mark Parent. Hey, mud pitch today. Oh, did we win? Oh, well. That's a shocker. Must have vultured that one. <laughs> Rivera has hit the ball twice to the second baseman Perino. Once on the ground, once in the air. He did go around there. One-two pitch from Bass. Pretty good two strike pitch just off the outside corner with a slider. Can't get into fish for that slider down low. It's a full count. Oh, you notice my fish and bass mm -hmm. reference there. Yeah. Okay. It's a 3 2 to Cabrera. Fastball pounded into the ground is short. Bartlett puts it at first. Two away. Giants have the 4 3 lead. On comparison tonight, brought to you by the San Diego Toyota dealers. We've got what it takes. Look what they've done against the Padres. They've averaged over four runs a game in their contests against the Padres. And this is the 14th meeting between the teams. Against all other teams, a run less. You look up at the scoreboard. Look at that. Four. And that hit the Padres to this point. Eight five. Two outs for catcher Chris Stewart, who has a double when he is fly to left. Ninety-seven miles per hour. Just some giddy up. Going to miss down with that fastball. Miss around the ankles. You know, he made a great pitch to Cabrera. Get that ground ball to Bartlett. Focus bat, fly ball to right, and Demorphy under that. Nice inning for Anthony Bass. He sets down the Giants in order. It's Guzman, Blanks, and Hudley for the Padres when we come back.
So the Diamondbacks at 7.05. Get here early. First four is at 4.30. And you can drink great beer from 25 local breweries. Admission is free with the purchase of a game ticket. Visit Padres.com forward slash Oktoberfest for details. Is it Oktoberfest sounding name? Steven Edlifson enters the contest. Three pitch pitcher, fastball slider change. Low 90s on the fastball, always working from the stretch. He is. He's got the motion that's, uh, how can I say, highly caffeinated, right? <laughs> A lot of movement, perky jerky. He's almost Roger McDowell like. Yeah. Yeah. Short stride, That's sinker baller. A little turnover, a little sink. A little I don't, run. I don't, yeah, I don't know if Edlifson scuffs, though. That's the only difference between <laughs> by him and Roger McDowell. <laughs> did I say that? Yes, you did. I did? Okay. <laughs> Inside to Guzman. Edlifson from the Twin Cities, Minneapolis. So that surname is probably Scandinavian. S-O-N, right? S-E-N, actually. Oh, it is? Slow ground to the third. DeRosa bare hands. And got him. Mark DeRosa makes the bare hand play. We get Guzman to begin the sixth. And will bring up Kyle Blinks. Time for our comparison. Brought to you by the San Diego Toyota dealers. And Tony, we did a little research according to baseball reference. You struck out looking 99 times in your career. It's embarrassing. <laughs> 99 times. I went up to the plate and didn't do what I set out to do. Now, only one time, one season in your career, did you strike out looking more than nine times in double digits. Okay. And that was 1988. Struck out looking 17 times. All your other seasons, you struck out looking... Nine times with fuel. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll take that. That, according to baseball reference. I don't know how you guys do that, but pretty amazing how you guys can pull those stats out. 99 out of 434. That's the thing about Tony, though. You know, going to other teams after the Padres, you knew he was going to put the ball in play, right? When we go over our scouting reports. And... I first got wind of it when I went from the Padres to the Braves. The Padres were coming into town. Tony's name comes up, and I just wanted to sit back and kind of listen first to see what before I contributed. And the first thing out of somebody's mouth was, just throw it down the middle. Hopefully he'll hit it at somebody. <laughs> we played the Expos one night. Gary Carter basically just told me that. Hey, we're going to throw it down we're the middle. We're just going to throw it right down the middle. <laughs> Kyle Blanks walks with one out. Now, did you think that was more of a mind game? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. You're just going to throw fastballs <laughs> right down the middle. Yeah. And, you know, Doug Harvey was behind the plate that night. You know, Gary said, okay, fastball. And I'm like, hey, you can't talk to the hitter. Doug, you can't talk to the hitters. There's nothing in the rule that says you can't talk to. And I, you know, fastball right down the middle. Be fastball right down the middle. <laughs> and the thinking was if you... If you threw it down the middle, you wouldn't have time to process it, and you'd get yourself out. Instead of if it's on outer third, you go to left. If it's on inner third, you try to pull it. If it's in the middle, you do what you want. And, uh, yeah, the first couple of times up that night, it was ugly. <laughs> it was pretty ugly. But, uh, you know, eventually you just learn to block them out, do what you do. And Conley has a homer tonight and is flied to right. Takes on the inside corner. So you had heard, obviously, that scouting report on you just throw oh, yeah. it down the middle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was it was kind of true because I didn't hit the ball out of the ballpark. Pitchers were like, you know, why am I going to spend all day trying to strike this guy out? He's going to put the bat on the ball, so I'm just going to try to make a good pitch. You know, and I, I really tried to use it to my advantage. And, you know, when I watch a guy like Kepinger with the Giants, he kind of has that same kind of mentality. You know, he doesn't care about being down in the count. He's just going to take his swing and try to put it in place. And 
there's still a bunch of, I call them Judy's, there's still a bunch of Judy's around the league, mm -hmm. Ichiro <laughs> and Juan Pierre, and, you know, guys who, you know, really have to, you know, Jamie Carroll, my son, have to really battle and, you know, force a guy to throw something up there to hit. But, It goes around and strikes out. Anderson with his first strike out of the inning, and there are two away. Steve Edlifson out of Minnesota. Well, he attended the University of Nebraska. <laughs> Handed hitting Will Venable for the bat for the right handed hitting the Norfias. The Padres in the match up here against the right hander Steven Edlifson. And now Bruce Bochy wants to do some matching up of his own. You do have the pitcher spot. Due to lead off the next inning for San Francisco. So it looks like we're going to see a double switch with Affel coming in to pitch for the Giants. This pitching change is brought to you by the Law Tigers, San Diego's motorcycle injury lawyers. Who ride? CP block and brick. Create a pathway through your garden with easy to install stepping stones. And in for the Giants, left hander Jeremy Affelt. Well, Jeremy Affelt actually has some saves this year, three to be exact. And he's in here for the matchup here in the sixth inning, so it'll be lefty Will Venable. And Affelt been around for a while. Fastball, curveball, and a split mid 90s on the fastball. Throws across his body. It's got to be tough as a lefty. You notice that's DeRosa now playing first. He has moved over from third, and Pablo Sandoval has come in as part of the double switch. Lefty's only hitting 148. Legs takes off and swipes his second bag of the year. Two for two in steal attempts now this season. Wow, got a great jump. He got a great jump. Stewart does all he can do. He gets rid of it quickly, but he's able to still still bag and get himself a score. Position. Picked a good pitch to run on. Also, looked like it was a breaking ball. Will hits it slowly right side. Kepinger up throws and gets him by a step. To retire the side. The Padres strand the potential tie run at second. Mr. Padre. San Diego down a run in the
Permadonics, Southern California's premier dental implant center. By MTS, MTS moves me. And by Cadillac, visit your San Diego County Cadillac dealer for an attractive lease or purchase offer. Just off the main entrance behind home plate at Petco Park, beautiful fountain, waterfall. Game heads into the seventh inning. Sandoval, who came in as part of the double switch in the last frame, leads off for San Francisco. Nine, one, and two hitters for the Giants. Sandoval, who's had issues batting right handed due to a left shoulder that irritates him at times, is not in the lineup due to the left handed starting pitcher, LeBlanc. Tonight, but yesterday, hit two out, ran over the beach in right center field. The other he pulled out to right, but as you said, they both were not fastballs. They were the breaking balls and hits this one on the ground to short. Bartlett throws him out, and that was a fastball from Anthony Bass. A good, I should say, well placed, well located fastball by Anthony Bass. Bass has been getting that fastball up to 97 tonight. And look at that. That's outer half. Good pitch by Anthony. Yep. Top of the order at center fielder Justin Christian. And his Giants debut is one for three. Christian doubled the left his last time up and scored. Did you see what the umpire is doing? Well, now he's around home plate, but he was up in front of home plate. Is that where Sandoval was doing his landscaping yeah. before? Uh, <laughs> he went up in front of home plate bat? and grabbed some dirt, yeah, turfus, whatever that is, repacked home plate. Ninety-six mile per hour fastball is going away. Seen that the last couple of nights. Why would Sandoval go up in front of home plate and do his little landscaping thing? I guess he does it every at bat. Really? I've heard that's his tribute to, a, and I may get the family members incorrect, but a grandmother and a mm -hmm. sister. The one two pitch to Christian. Looking back, ground ball to short. Bartley charges and throws. This one can get down the line pretty well, but he's out by a step. Five up, five down against Anthony Bass. Bartlett makes that play look so easy. Mm -hmm. Christian could run a little bit, and he knew as soon as he came up with that ball, he was going to have to put something on the throw to get him at first, and he did. He was able to get it. There's Kepinger who double leading off the third and scored. He's also flied out and grounded out. You like this guy's approach, don't you? Well, I do just because, you know, it doesn't matter for guys, you know, Anthony Bass, he gets it up there really good. You know, good velocity on the fastball, good breaking ball. And if you watch Kepinger hit, he didn't. He didn't there he looked like he got sped up, but normally he doesn't look like he gets sped up because of velocity or stuff. He just says to himself, you know what, I'm a pretty good hitter. I'm just going to put the bat on the ball. I hit it where I hit it. Make the defense get me out. It's that one foul down the right field side. The ball girl trying to make that catch on the fly. Lisa, Lisa? yeah, it looked like a very catchable ball. We'll have to review this one again. Let's see. Yeah, it's you know what? That's an error. Sorry. Got to call him as I see him. Tough day in the big leagues. Maybe they need some ball girls in Tucson. Oh, ouch. It's a short. Bartlett throws him out. I think the Tucson season is over. Oh, so we'll keep her. We'll keep you, Lisa. It's all good. Time for the seventh inning stretch. Brought to you by. The San Diego Hyundai Dealers. Shop online at San Diego Hyundai Dealers.com.
now tire where America saves on tire. Strasburg back he threw five scoreless but not involved in the decision as the Dodgers came back to win 7-3 and Tulowitzki in a three run homer. Rockies rallied to beat Arizona 8-3 so the Giants now sniffing an opportunity to pull within six the first in the NL West. They have 20 games to go after this one. Nick talking with pitching coach Darren Balsley. Looks like he's talking about setup and receiving. Bottom three up in the Padres seventh. James Darnell takes the one one pitch outside. And one. James grounded out to third in the second. And on a check swing, went into a 6 4 3 double play his last time up in the fourth. He leads off to San Diego's seventh, and on the 3 1 pitch, hits it on the ground to third. And Sandoval's first opportunity of the night. Hitting Andy Perino, the hitter. Andy with a sack fly in the second for his first big league RBI. Down low from Jeremy Affelt. That gets out of play right side. Giants have four runs, eight hits in an error. The Padres, three runs, five hits, no errors. The Orphea, who was lifted for a pinch hitter, the only multi hit game to this point for the Padres, and that's in the center field. The broken back base hit for Perino. That's his first big league hit right handed. And a one out single. I see where the barrel went on that swing. Halfway up the screen over here to the on deck. Up the screen. Hmm. It's that right off the end, and that bat just. Winners and the barrel goes flying up halfway up the screen behind home plate. And of course, he'll take it. Base hit. Absolutely. Knock. Pitcher spot due up, and the Padres will pinch hit for Bass with Luis Martinez. Martinez 0 for 2 as a pinch hitter. NFL misses high. Ramon Ramirez up in the Giants bullpen. Breaking ball strike. Great break in that breaking ball by Alfredo. Martinez batting for Bass. Two clean innings for Bass. Two perfect innings of relief. Two and two on Martinez. Out in front and pulls a foul. Yeah. 
One on one out in the Padres seventh San Diego down a run. I felt misses high. Look in there out out there on the mound. I don't know if they would send the runner here. We know not running and it's fouled back. Martinez took a shot at trying to get that ball to right field. Another 3 2 pitch from Jeremy Affelt. Pumped up to 95 miles yeah. per hour on that fastball and strikes out the pinch hitter Martinez. Oh, it's a case of Affelt save it for later in the at bat. And as you mentioned, Mark Neely, placing that fastball away at 95. You can't get hurt out there. Top of the order, Cameron Mabin. Maybe his flight out, struck out, and grounded out. Really just his second game back as far as being able to bat due to the wrist injury. And before he got hurt, he was really swinging him back well. Mm -hmm. Oh. All the strike in the inside corner. It's the glove this hitter, but yeah. it looked like it was inside. Got it in with the breaky ball. Two and two to Cameron Maven. Two out to the San Diego seventh. Off the end of the bat and grounded to Keppinger who will make the throw to first. And hit the man left on. Padres have now stranded four as have the Giants. And at the end of seven San Francisco has the one run lead. Speech or online at Mossy.com. 
New Padre pitchers Luke Gregerson. Well, last time out for Luke was against those Colorado Rockies three days ago. He's got the slider biting sinker working for him. He had a, he had a span that was difficult for him to find the strike zone with both of his pitches, but he has worked that out very effective. He's your eighth inning guy tonight. Three, four, and five hitters for the Giants in the eighth in a 4 3 game. And leading off, switch hitting outfielder Carlos Beltran. Three for three night for Beltran. Two singles, a double, and he's knocked in two. Beltran finishing up the seven year deal he signed. It was for $119 million as a free agent after this season. That was the deal that he signed. After he absolutely tore it up in the postseason with Houston in 2004, he had eight homers in the postseason that year for the Astros. Where Houston lost to the Cardinals in the NLCS, and Beltran signed the big deal with the Mets for seven years. It's going to be interesting to see if the Giants want to resign, try to resign Beltran. Hitting issues on that club. Mochi and Brian Sabian have some. I'm sure you're going to have some interesting discussions this winter about some of the guys on this roster. On the left field side near the line, just foul. Motron came within about a foot of his fourth hit of the game. You know, you're talking about 2012 for these Giants. They're going to have some guys on payroll next year still, like Rowan, Zito, Huff, right? Yes. So that's that's a lot of money on the books for next year. So it's going to be interesting to see how they spend their free agent money, if any. Their pitching's good enough. Mm -hmm. You just got to figure out a way to put some runs on the board. Beltran is on base for a fourth time, this time via the base on balls. And it's Cody Ross, the left fielder. Cody Ross takes a high strike. Ross has fly to center twice. Bounce back to the mound. Low tap left side. Gregerson gave a look to second. He'll take the out at first. Beltran advances. One out. It's one of the frustrating things about a sinker ball pitcher and slider pitcher where you don't get that grounder that's hit hard enough yeah. to turn to. And I think that was the case there. Sure, Luke Gregerson got the sure out at first base, but now the Giants have a runner in scoring position. Because he looked at second base mm -hmm. and really didn't have a play at Beltran. At second, so I had to take you out at first. Mark DeRosa now playing first base. That's a Gregerson pitch low. Pitcher spot due up next. And the six hole due to the double switch earlier. Right center field and Will Venable 
They'll try and bluff a tag. Throw comes in that's cut off. Two away. Fontenot will bat for the pitcher FL. Padres have first base open. Right handed hitter Cabrera on deck. It looks like the Padres are going to put Fontenot on. Cody Black will play the percentages here. So a fall to Cabrera with two on, two outs. Once this ball four completes the intentional walk. I was just going to pose the question to you guys first. Rules are concerned. I love the rule that you have to throw four wide ones because people have said, you know, to speed up the game. Oh, we're just going to put. No, 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 no. Make that pitcher throw four wide ones. We've seen it get pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. Guys firing it back to the screen or bouncing it up there. You guys should see the college game. <laughs> See, exactly, exactly you got, what you're talking about. A serious question: Do they work on that? Because yeah. I remember with teams, we'd work yeah. on that. You know, four wide ones, absolutely. Most teams do. Orlando Cabrera 0 for three tonight. It's a right back up the middle and into center. Bell trying to wave around by Flannery. Here comes the throw home. Save. RBI single for Orlando Cabrera gives the Giants a two on lead. Just getting ready to say Cabrera's the type of guy, the type of hitter. This is where he thrives. Got a hanging slider right in the middle of the plate, drives it right up the middle. Maybe a strong throw to the plate, but great slide by Beltran. Oh, I thought they had a chance at it at the plate. Man. Maybe if that ball stays down, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yep. Built on getting underneath the tag right there. That was a great slide. Yeah. He did all he could do to take the home plate away from him. Now Stewart rolled out. Gregerson got him at first. What a play. Luke one hopped at the first, and Guzman picked it out. The Giants do add a run in the eighth and lead it 5 3.
Channel 4 studio tonight with Jenny Kempner and Bob Scanlon. Saquon Casino, get away for the day at Saquon. Giants employ their fourth pitcher of this game. It's Sergio Romo. Boy, some great numbers for Sergio Romo. Fastball slider and a change. <laughs> Look at those numbers. You talk about a guy throwing strikes. And not overpowering by any stretch. I mean, he's not a guy that throws 96, 97. He's around 90, 91. It's all about good location and good tailing action on that fastball. He's a fly ball pitcher. Only four walks. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Part of the order for the Padres in the eighth. San Diego down two. Bartlett, the shortstop, leads off. Golden goes around and the slider strike one. Not put away, a ball and a strike. One pitch from Romo. He was brought it again with the slider one and two. There are times when Sergio Romo varies the depth on that slider. Sometimes it's the sweeper like a frisbee. Sometimes it's got greater tilt to it. And that's the beauty of that pitch. It's more than just one breaking ball. That slider moves off the plate. Bartlett, Guzman, and Blank scheduled in the San Diego eighth. Bartlett lays off another slider and works it full. That's what Rommel does a really good job of. You know, throw you that slider that's just a little bit off the plate. And can come back with that one that he can throw for a strike. Mm -hmm. No. I thought that ball was like it was off the plate. Bartlett called out on strikes for the first out of the eighth. We were talking about being called out on strikes earlier, and Tony, again, thanks to baseball reference, you struck out looking less than 1% of the time of all your career plate appearances. And there are some of your contemporaries, including three other Hall of Famers. Brett struck out one and a half, uh, 1.6. Cal Ripken, 3% of the time. Look at it. Hit hard, just foul pass through after bad at Guzman. Brett and Ripken, both of those guys were home run hitters, too. Ripken. 400 something homers, Brett. Mm -hmm. 300 something homers. Pretty good company. Yeah, you mentioned Brett, and it's odd that third base has so few in the Hall of Fame because when I think greatest third baseman of all time it's just a Mike Schmidt George Brett argument yeah <laughs> I agree although some, some yeah, you go way Robinson, back. Eddie Matthews as as, yeah. Brooks Robinson right but as far as with the bat as well as the yeah. glove yeah those are the two guys absolutely who's is grounded to second third and short And runs inside. Padres down two in the eighth. They've never led in this game. And they've been out hit nine six. Romo drops in the slider for a strike at the knees. When he took a little bit a little bit more off on the slider there 78 miles an hour. And 
reaches and sends it in the air to center field and Justin Christian threw away in the eighth. Well, the bases are empty for Kyle Blanks, who has flirted with hitting one out a couple of times tonight. His first time up in the first, he flied to very deep left. The sack fly in the third was to the warning track that turned into a RBI on the sack fly. First one got in on him a little bit, and the second one off the end of the bat a little bit too much. Let's see if we can find that sweet spot. Gonna say it probably won't be on the inner half. Yeah. Throws him a slider. Romo's only given up two home runs this year. Going to this game, 39 in the third innings pitch. Pods need base runners though. Loop it a blast. Kyle walked in, stole the base of the sixth, the second steal of the year. Believe it or miss, that slider at 77 miles per hour. After Javier Lopez getting ready in the Giants bullpen. That's a show me fastball there. There's the eye level up just a little bit. To set up a slider down in the dirt. Slider, slider away. away. Or he tried to sneak another fastball by him. Guessing? I'm guessing slider. Slider. Slide piece to call and it's outside. And a full count. Romo wanted that pitch right there. He wanted to start that slider in the zone and run it off the plate and see if he can get Kyle Blanks to chase it. Close pitch. The ball four to Blanks, and that's going to bring the tying run of the plate. That's as close as you can get. Yeah. That touch of the line. You got a trainer going out to the mound. Bochi right behind him. Well, Chris Gocioni, the home plate umpire, right in on the conversation, so. Bruce Bochy doesn't uh, talk to him. Let's see his follow through here. Kind of does a little skip and then a hop. Like something with the left yeah. foot or ankle or something in that lower left leg. So uh, Chris Cuccioni indicating that no visit because the trainer went out there to talk to him. Well, the tying run is represented by Nick Hundley. Nick could a solo blast to center in the second. Since then, he's flied the right and struck out. Kind of left that slider over the plate. Yeah. Huh? First pitch to Blanks was the same one, getting yep. ahead. Hit. Might be the only good slider that you get a chance to hack at. And the one that you really want to hit, that's that's mm -hmm. the one. I think it's two. Was Nick asking swinging or call, and I think that was called. Two. Off the plate, see if Nick would chase it. Oh. 
Blanks at first, two outs in the San Diego eighth. 5 3 Giants leading. On lead, did he go? No. First base on time, Mike Mosinski. Making the decision. Romo put this right where he wanted to put it, where he needed to put it. Mm. I think the Giants caught a break. Or the Padres caught a break? I'm sorry, yeah. the Padres caught a break. Yeah, I mm. thought he went. You think they all go? <laughs> Believe it. <laughs> Do you offer at it? Bring him up. Let's see if Nick can make it hurt. 2 2 pitch. Polar Blast presented by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. This was the Hundley Homer early in the game. That's the starting pitcher. Sir Camp. Now he's at the plate representing the tying run in the eighth. A full count, two outs. So Blanks will be off from first with the pitch. Rosa plays behind him. Right back to the slider and two strikeouts in the inning for Romo. The move to the ninth, 5 3 San Francisco. As Tony Gwynn says, nobody beats El Cajon Ford. Visit them at Broadway in Maine or ElCajonFord.com. This is Brett Pill in his first major league at bat, second major league pitch he'd ever seen. He homers off the Western Metal Building. Here's the Giants a 2 0 lead. The Padres will come back, tie it, tie it again at three. With now a 5 3 Giants lead here into the ninth inning and on for the Padres. Comes the left-hander, Josh Spence. Well, you talk about uh, making adjustments, and these giant hitters know about Josh Spence. Trying to shut him down here before the Padres get their last chance. So it's going to be the soft-tossing Spence against Pablo Sandoval from the right side. And there he goes again, messing it up in front of home plate. Kicks his shoes a couple of times, taps his helmet a couple of times. Sandoval is only at bat tonight. He grounded out to short. That was in the seventh. He came in as part of a double switch in the bottom of the sixth. A base hit. Yeah. 
Fifth time tonight the Giants have put the leadoff hitter on base. I watched Pablo take batting practice today right handed. Didn't look like anything like a shoulder was bothering him. And it's a pretty nice swing right here. Mm -hmm. Ball's elevated, goes the other way. So Spence faces Sandoval and will depart. Eric Cameron, who just rejoined the club in Triple-A Tucson today, will come on for the Padres, and with this pitching change, will step aside and return after this. Mission Federal Credit Union, your home base for great auto loan rates and all-star service. Find out more at MissionFed.com. Eric Hammerin, recall today from Triple A Tucson, his second stint with the Padres this year. In the short time that he's been here, done pretty well. More high on the walks, though. Got to get that number down. The opponent's batting average very nice at 167. So looking for the ground here. Sinker slider. See if uh, Christian is swinging away here. That Darnell in at third. Christian lays down the bunt. Hammering, able to get to it and make the long underhand toss. That ball almost got by the Padre pitcher and had it. Carino would have not had a great chance to throw out the runner at first, but the sack bunt was 1 3. Nice play by Hammering. If it gets by him, it's going to be a base hit. Knock that ball down. Is the Guzman. Second baseman Jeff Kempinger. Well, it's just too bad that that bunt wasn't hit directly at Hammer, where he could have gone to second base to get that lead runner. Hamlin, the fifth Padres pitcher of the game. LeBlanc, the starter, went five. Bassman, two scoreless. Line past the guiding second baseman, Perino, and in the right. Fumbled for a moment by Venable, but the lead runner will remain at third, and the ball gets by, but backing up is Hamlin. Sandoval holding it third. And it's first and third, one out. Kempinger's just going the other way with it. Just out of reach. And Perino. You know, he comes up with it and then bobbles it and almost makes an error. He's back up by Hamlin behind Hundley at the plate. We're at the corners with one out for Beltron. He pulls it foul. Padres have not been able to get Beltron out tonight. Three for three with a walk. He scored a run and knocked into one of his hits is a double. Oh, 
Kevin Slider is outside. One and one. Well, on the year, Baltran has grounded into 15 double plays since he's worn the Giants uniform six times. Steps off. Sandoval, the lead runner at third. At first, it's Keppinger. Off the glove of the first base from Guzman. It triples to Perino to get the out at first. Sandoval scores to make it 6-3. to three. They finally retire Belton, but in the process, he gets his third RBI of the game. It kind of stinks when the ball just doesn't bounce your way off the back end of the glove there. And the big thing there, at least the Padres get an out, but the Giants chuck up another run. Good job by Perino, not giving up on the play. A fairly rare 3-4-3 three, three put out. And a pitter Cody Ross, a hitless night. And he fly to center twice and bounce back to the pitcher twice. Carlos Beltran, who came in with seven RBIs in 23 games with the Giants, has knocked in three tonight with three hits. One of his better nights as a yeah, Giant. Wow, he's had opportunities to knock in runs tonight. Fouled back by Cody Ross. There's Brian Wilson's been out since mid-August with the right elbow inflammation. Giants have had a number of candidates that have closed. Casilla is one of them, and he's up in the Giants bullpen. So they've had Romo, Affelt, Casilla. The host of Giant relievers. Javier Lopez. Yeah, when you Lopez uh, also up in the bullpen. When you get into a situation like that, it's basically you know just match up matchups or who's fresh down there that can. Because when you look at this Giants bullpen, who ranks first in the major leagues, mind you, with a 2.93 ERA, and that, that's a great luxury to have when you go to a number of guys down there to close out a ball game. And the Giants are right behind them, number two, at 2.96. Another foul from Ross. When you get to September baseball, you know, Boats likes to have you know, let these righties down there so he can match up. Half out. Lopez. And the righties one more. You see it. Ramirez. Driven towards right center, but Venable makes another late adjustment and makes the catch. Giants had a run on a couple of hits. Last chance for the Padres. Six, seven, and eight part due up in the bottom of the ninth.
didn't subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Padre game live or on demand on your computer and your favorite devices. Visit Padres.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Left-hander Javier Lopez, the next to the mound for the Giants. We just talked about the relievers for the Giants who have a number of saves. Affelt, Casilla. Now Lopez enters the mix. One save on the year. Fastball cutter, slider change. Usually a left-handed specialist. High 80s. He's got to rely on location and a little deception. The sidewinder. Just a bit outside. That's the glove of Stewart. Orlando Hudson, a switch hitter batting for Venable here to begin the ninth. Right handed hitter Dardell and a switch hitter Perino do up third in the inning. Ball two outside. It's an 0 for 4 as a pinch hitter this year. Padres need a couple of base runners to have a chance. Down 6 3 in the bottom of the ninth. Well, there's one. Ball four to Dandy. Four pitch block to the pinch hitter Orlando Hudson. Now, Bruce Bochy comes out, and it'll be a four pitch night for Javier Lopez. Red Santiago Casilla also getting ready in the bullpen. He'll march on as the Giants make another pitching change and we'll be back after this. RCP block and brick create a pathway through your garden with easy to install stepping stones. Santiago Casilla last night pitched two thirds of an inning with some nasty stuff. Faced two Padres, Denorfia and Gonzalez, and they both went down swinging. Opponent's batting average 176. And when you look at the stuff of Casilla, fastball mid 90s and a curve slider to change. Darnell do up the Padres pinch hit with the left handed bat. Of Jeremy Hermida. Colorado beat Arizona tonight, eight to three at Coors Field. So a Giants win and push them six games back of the first place D-backs with 20 to play. Check swing. We ask for the appeal. No, says Mike Ever to third.
94 miles per hour. He gets the fastball by Hermita. One and two. First heater was 92. Now 94. Getting turning it up a notch. Yep. Had a little two seam action, didn't mm -hmm. it? Tailing away. Outside it went two and two. You know, control can be an issue for Casilla as well. So if you get that movement, like that last pitch, you know, it's easier said than done, but the left hand like Hermita. Hopefully you lay off it, off the plate, get a couple more, ba get a base runner here first and second. Mm. A tough layoff. Goes now with a fastball and is one out in the Padres ninth. He didn't mess around with anything else. Came right at him with fastballs. Andy Perino will bat left-handed against Casilla. Singleton his last at bat. It was a base hit to center. This came from the other side of the plate right handed. Send the ball in on the grass at third. Ryan Wilson has been on the DL with the right elbow inflammation since the middle of August. Line right at the second baseman, Keppinger. Gave a look at Hudson back to first, but the Padres are down to the final out. Santiago Casilla unscored upon in his last 11 outings coming in. The current 13 innings score this streak. Padres and Giants tomorrow in the finale of the series. No pregame. We're on at 3.30. Next time to do the pregame show comes to you 6.15 Thursday night from Phoenix. Anthony Rizzo. Pinch hitting. First pitch curveball from Casilla. Strike one. Five mile per hour fastball fouled back. And the Padres are down to the last strike. Anthony hanging in, got jammed with a fastball and fouled it back. To see a credit, he came he's coming right at him. Fastball inside, 0 2. Sometimes 0 2, they have won a waste run, but in this case, he didn't. He came right at him. Fastball on the inner half of the plate. And he's still able to foul it off. High flight to right. Peltron looks up off the very top of the fence. Hudson coming home. Here comes the throw to the plate, and he's safe. Well, Hudson barely makes it in at home to extend the game. But a pinch hit RBI double for Rizzo, and the Padres will get the time run of the plate. You know, as soon as that ball was struck, and it got to its apex, right, out in right field, I looked at Carlos Beltran. He had his numbers and name to the to the infield and there it is there he's either going to play the carom or he knew he wasn't going to get yeah. it so nice relay too good slide by orlando hudson as well the well, last thing you want to do is make the final out of oh. home there but hudson did get in and here's the tying run at the plate and cameron maven Ball one low. A 
Anthony Rizzo off the bench with a pinch hit RBI double. His first career successful major league pinch hit. He's been 0 for 2 prior to that. Check swing. 2 0. He hadn't thrown many off lead pitches and he got a hanging breaking ball and stayed back on it nicely and put a nice swing on it. Anywhere else, that's probably a home oh, run. Yeah. Outside for three. And Casilla was a strike away from his third save of the season. Now he's in danger of putting the tying run on base. There's in a 96 mile per hour fastball strike. It was almost like a frustration fastball. Mm -hmm. Preach it back for a little yeah, extra. I mean, I've been missing here. Let me let me bring my best one here. Had a little attitude on it, didn't it? Three one pitch. Chopper towards third. He's going to let it roll. Foul ball. Fortunately, it may have got Rizzo going to third. And the Padres nearly made the final out and hold that third base in this game, but are still alive. Yeah, that ball hit foul, and then Sandball. You know, you think about it, Sandball does the right thing. He does do the right, right? thing. He wasn't going to get Maven at right. first. He did the right thing. You make the play and let the umpire make the call. Yeah. Luckily for the Padres, that ball rolled foul. Well, you're right. Otherwise, they would have made it a third out at third mm -hmm. base to end the game. And, and that's kind of a tough play because as a runner at second with two outs, you're going. And this one just happened to be right down the line. So, you know, ground ball to third, you're going to have to read it a little bit better. 3-2 pitch coming to Maven. Fouls away the fastball. You see it trying to close it out. Wilson has been on the DL with right elbow inflammation. Casilla missed the first 48 games of the year this season for the Giants. Due to an inflamed right elbow. Tied run at the plate for the Padres, but are down to their last strike again. 3-2. And it hit him. Would have been ball four. But it hits Maven. The tying runs are on. The winning run will come to the plate. And Dave Rigetti, the Giants pitching coach, will go to the mound. Mm. The back elbow? Yep. Gonna be ball four. Yep. Oh, that's gotta hurt. It's in the back elbow. No action in the Giants bullpen <laughs> as Dave Rigetti has a chat with Casilla. Like it's gonna be Casilla's game. Yeah. Well, there's the phone ringing. Ramirez is going to get up. All in the gap or down the line. Padres might have a chance to tie this game up. Outfield is playing deep. Jason Bartlett doubled and scored. Whoa. Well, a to see the pitch up and in to Bartlett. Got a slide of it just it got away? I, I think it was. Yeah. Now you know Casilla's got to be thinking about a hit batsman. Yep. Nearly spins the cap of Jason Bartlett. Gets to a point where a pitcher's out there and you start aiming it a little yep. bit. You don't have your necessarily best stuff. He came in the game really was no pressure. Now there's some pressure. 
Giving up a double with two outs to get the fourth run in, and he hits Maven. And now the first pitch is way out of the strike zone. Oh, hit him. Kyle mm. Hutchinson, the Padres athletic trainer, will come out. That ball looked like it got Bartlett. Right on top of the hand or be near the wrist. That was hurt. Yeah, looks like top of the hand, yeah. huh? A lot, a lot of hand. meat on top of your hand. Looks like a daddy right on top. Left hand. Well, Casilla was a strike away from ending this game before the Rizzo pinch hit double off the top of the right field fence. And now Bruce Bochy will go get Ramon Ramirez. So the bases are loaded with two outs. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. Padres down two, but have the bases loaded. And on comes the seventh pitcher tonight for the Giants, Ramon Ramirez. Well, definitely pitcher Ramirez for him. The pressure is on him. Fastball slider change. Max effort guy. It's getting interesting here, boys. The right guy at the plate, too. Jesus Guzman, bases loaded, two outs in a two-run game. Tonight he's 0 for 4. Throws in strike one. Not going to wait at Guzman. With two outs, the Rizzo double and then back to back hit by pitches of Maven and Bartlett. Blocked by Stewart, two and one. You know, a situation like this, the breaking ball's got to be in the back of the head of the pitcher there, and for that reason. And Chris Stewart, you talk about anticipating that breaking ball, if called, it's got to be on his game as well. He did a nice job of blocking that last pitch, but you're right. Got ahead, and now he's falling behind 2 1. Big oh. rip by Guzman at that fastball and fouled it straight back. Look up there, he was trying to take a bet ball to right center field. Yes, sir. Fastball away. He's right on it. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to go the other way with that. 
Nice three. Padres once again down to their final strike. The 2 2 coming from Ramon Ramirez. Too much time taken by Ramirez, and Guzman asks for time. It was one of those where Ramirez came set, and I don't think he liked what he agreed to yeah. throw right there. So he just held on to it. Slider strikes out Guzman, and the Giants hang on and win it six to four. The Padres two out rally in the ninth falls short, and the Giants win, coupled with the D backs loss, means San Francisco is six games out of first with 20 to play in the regular season. Coach's team wins their 75th game of the season. We'll take a timeout, come back and wrap it up.